Hey guys, Phil from One Wall Studio here, and I'm going to be talking to you guys today about the throat. This is part one in my screaming lessons series, and the most important thing you need to know before you're doing any screaming, singing, or aggressive vocal of any kind is how to breathe. <laughs> yeah, I know that sounds really simple, but consider the following. If you don't know how to breathe right, you're not going to be able to sustain any of the necessary power for the screams or the sayings at any given time. So, considering that the voice is an entire system all its own, you've got tons of important parts, and you have a whole system designed around being able to use your voice in different ways. An important one, of course, being the mouth. The very nature of the geometry and shape of your mouth is actually going to influence not only the way you can sing, but your volume level, the tone of your voice, and the amount of projection that you're going to be capable of. People with smaller mouths aren't going to be able to project as far as people with larger mouths. This is due to the inverse square law in physics. Not necessarily important right now, but it is something to consider. So if you've got a pretty small mouth, you probably won't be able to project very far. And that's okay. With microphones, anything is possible. Now, the most important parts to consider are your true vocal cords, which are the little flaps inside of your throat that vibrate in order to create the sounds you're hearing. When you're talking or singing, you're always using your true vocal cords. And that's really important because... When you're using your true vocal cords, you can use them for a variety of different sounds. You can use them to sing. Ah, you can use them for grit. Ah, ah, yeah, ah, ah, yeah, grit. And you can use them for true chord screams. I am the one to be. Without your true vocal cords, you wouldn't even be able to speak. So... They're very important, but if you can't use your false chord or your fry at any given time, consider doing a true chord scream. You can do it. Don't recommend doing it a ton, but it's nice for the occasional attack. Up next are your false vocal cords. Really only good for one thing, and that is screaming. It is the animalistic part of our vocal cords that's actually not commonly used in day-to-day -day usage. So... The false vocal cords sound a lot more than this. Very, very animalistic. Not at all the kind of thing that you would hear in day-to-day -day conversation. Up next, you've got the bridge or the mezzo, which is actually what separates your chest voice from your head voice. In males, that's really easy to find. The part where you go, uh, you hear the switch, where the tone totally changes. That bridge, the mezzo, is the area between there that you need to know in order to find where your fry region's at. So knowing where your head voice and your chest voice separate, note-wise, may not be super important if you're doing screaming. Physically, it is important because that's where you're going to find your fry. Also important are your sinuses because when doing any kind of screaming, you'll need to likely blend in some degree of nasal sound in order to create the kind of tone that screaming is known for. Just doing pure fry, like, uh, or pure false chord, uh, or even true vocals with some grit, uh, isn't likely going to sound that great or even be very comfortable without some degree of sinus blend. So here is I go from false chords into sinuses a little bit more. You notice how as I push it forward into my sinuses a little bit more, making it a little bit more eh. If I was talking, it would sound like that. A little bit more eh, eh sound. It creates a lot more distortion. And that's because the sinuses are a lot thinner and a lot more capable of creating resonances that the throat isn't really attuned to because the throat's really wide. So while the throat may not be great for it, the sinuses are absolutely great for adding some kind of distortion or aggression on the fly. You'll notice that a lot of old school uh, new metal and alternative rock singers would go up into their sinuses all the time and create like kind of a, you made me angry like that kind of thing because it's really easy to get grit from a really nasal sound. It's already got that kind of annoying register to it. So you might as well utilize it when you're trying to get a little bit more aggression without putting out more air because a switch from the lower part of the throat or the higher part of the throat up to the sinuses is always going to help with that. So that's an important thing to know sinus wise.
Keep in mind, we're not talking about any of the styles right now. We're just talking about how to utilize your throat system and how to breathe, which we haven't really gotten to yet, but we will. Another important thing is the soft palate. By raising the soft palate, you can often get a much smoother sound when you're talking or when you're singing. So if you were to raise the soft palate, you would automatically get a much more rounded tone. If you're screaming and you find that you really want something to have a round or smooth tone, uh, going from something a little bit less controlled to a bit more controlled, raising the soft palate, here's an example, going... I'm singing and now I'm singing with my soft palate raised. Now I'm singing without my soft palate raised. Ah, 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 eh, ah. It doesn't necessarily have to affect your tone that much as I was going on and off in the soft palette, but it's important to learn where that is and to feel it in case you need to round out your tone. Now, the most important part of the entire system, provided you have vo vocal cords uh, and sinuses, obviously, are your lips, teeth, and tongue. The lips, teeth, and tongue are how you create any kind of projection at all. If you're using your tongue properly, especially for some forms of screaming, you can actually really clearly delineate sounds from each other. Having proper diction will help a ton unless you're simply going for that sound of like <laughs> which is cool and all. You can do that. Like nobody's going to judge you for it. It's going to sound cool in like a slam context. But if you really want some form of diction, it'll help with projection because projection is how you really get people to hear the tone of your vocal while also feeling the impact of the consonants. If you were to avoid singing with your lips and teeth and tongue at all, then you would only sound like this. You see, the lips, teeth, and tongue form consonants. They also shape the sound of vowels. Vowel shaping is kind of important when screaming because you're trying to go for a certain sound. Consider that. Most importantly, teeth. A lot of people, when they're doing any of these styles, have a tendency to sound like they have a lisp. And that's not going to help them. It's really important to have proper diction, especially when screaming, and especially when screaming in fry. Because with fry, you already don't have a ton of power. So when you're going, ah, you may end up losing power like that. Unless you have some kind of proper diction. Take my hand! Exaggerating your consonants is really going to help you to keep the power of fry flowing no matter what the conditions are. If you don't have that kind of proper power, then fry becomes a lot more difficult to hear. And it sounds like you're slurring your words and it doesn't help much. Ugh. So especially for people who aren't used to doing fry, they frequently soften their vowels and their consonants. And it comes out like this because they're just focusing on the sound. You don't want to do that even if you're just starting out. You want to have proper diction first and add fry second. The same with any kind of vocal. You want to have proper diction first and then add the vocalization second, the notes, the scream, the whatever. The tone comes after diction so that you can be understood. I hope that helps. So everything you'll be doing is a combination of some or all of these mechanisms. Probably not all of them at once, but... I'm sure that you could do a true chord scream into a fry scream into a false chord scream all while pushing with your sinuses, your lips, teeth, tongue, and raising your soft palate. It might sound pretty cool. It might be incredibly difficult to do, but a good example is using your true chord voice into a fry or voicing your fry with some voice that's not just fry because then you get like all sorts of weird tonal combinations that can be really cool same with false chord false chord sounds cool but it sounds better when it's voiced so you could make just the false but if you add that some true chord to it it sounds even better 
because you have a lot more control when you add two different techniques together. Obviously, you have to have some degree of comfortability with both of those techniques if you're going to combine them, but you get the best results out of combining, rearranging, mixing the different styles, and really coming to have your own style. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind as well. In spite of everything I've said today, if you come away with just one thing, it is you can have any combination of these things and it's going to be totally different than anybody else's. So don't try to emulate somebody else's because all you have to do is figure out what works for you, what combinations you like to do and are comfortable doing and how to do it healthily. Now, the first thing when it comes to doing any kind of vocal is breathing. So I'm going to go on to some breathing exercises now and I'm going to show you how to breathe properly. So when you breathe, go in through your nose and out through your mouth. Now, one thing I did wrong there that a lot of people do is I raised my shoulders and raised my chest a bit, but you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to breathe in And while you're doing that, try to push your shoulders down and push your gut down so that it feels like as you breathe in the air, you're relaxing your muscles and pushing everything down to your core. If you have to bend your knees a little bit to do that, then absolutely go for it. Now, breathing in the nose, no lift, out the mouth, is the way that you're going to be able to get the most air while singing and screaming and not take (gasps) huge gasping breaths all the time, especially with something like false chord or true chord screams. You're using a lot of air and using all of that air means you're going to run out quicker in the beginning than later. So it's really important to focus on breathing now so you build the healthy habits before you start running out of breath. A really common thing that happens when people learn to scream, especially the louder kind, is they'll start to scream, you don't know, and they'll have to do a lot of takes because everything comes out and makes them winded. They're using all of their air at once. Airflow and air control starts with proper breathing in and breathing out technique. In order to maximize the amount of power you've got, you need proper posture as well. So part of that posture is just knowing that your shoulders are dropped, your chest is dropped, your gut is pushed out and also as low as possible. So you feel like you've got a solid center from your core down to your legs and everything above it is really light and doesn't go up because that restricts airflow and creates tension in the neck as well as the chest. You want everything to be relaxed. Once you have this posture in mind, you could be doing this while laying down. Try to avoid sitting, try to stand or lay down, but you really want to exercise your breathing. You want to be able to bring it in, swallow if you have to, to really push everything down. Sometimes when you swallow after an in-breath, it can create the feeling of really centering yourself. So a sharp inhale from your mouth and then a swallow will give you this really tight feeling in your lungs, like you've really pushed it beyond what it usually is used to. That's going to help expand the lungs. And then once you've done that, you really want to let it go for as long as you can. Try to time yourself. See if you can start and get gradually better. You might find that you improve by two, three seconds at a time until eventually you've reached your limit for the day. So go... Or, or, personally, I prefer until I run out of air because doing that kind of, you'll really be able to easily hear where you run out of air and when your airflow becomes unstable. So when you're doing it, Just do that for as long as you can. Really try to get it to be a consistent sound and get it to be a consistent airflow and air pressure so that you can regulate your breathing and figure out, all right, this is how much air I need to create the sound. I don't need to go above that. I don't need to go below that. Find the optimal range where you're able to maximize the amount of time you make the sound while also being able to maintain it consistently at a certain degree of power. 
This may sound kind of ridiculous, but it helps with expanding your lungs and also giving you an idea of how long you can hold your lowest air pressure notes. So especially if you're doing something that's really low air but high maintenance, something that requires a lot of precision, something like... Like maintaining note across multiple different voicings or just for a long period of time or doing fry forever. (laughs) You might find that you start to develop a little bit of like a a crack in your voice when you're doing fry, just stay hydrated. Don't overexert yourself. If you start to feel any pressure, stop. But in particular, because fry uses the least amount of air of all of the styles, you can usually hold it out for as long as you can do the tss for when you're practicing. So if you can hold that out for 30 seconds, then chances are you'll be able to do a fry scream for 30 seconds with the exact same precision once you find that place. So this is a practical technique and skill to use for singing, screaming, etc. And it's one of the best ways to expand your lung capacity over time just by exercising your lungs with that or 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 any kind of noise that you need to make in order to hear it and time yourself with a timer. That's the best possible exercise you can use for increasing your lung capacity and it's going to help you immensely when you start to do any kind of recording or performing. Now, the last thing that I'm going to suggest, which just trying to keep this short, you know, but the most important thing you can do right now, if you're running out of air, there is a trick that you can use in order to sustain it for longer. So let's see how long I can hold out this false chord note, right? I'm breaking out a stopwatch right now. Four seconds. Absolutely terrible. Now let me do the same thing while pressing my butt cheeks together and pushing my pelvis forward in the middle of the scream in order to increase the amount of airflow that goes up. Watch this. Five seconds. Much better. So all in all, if you find yourself running out of air during anything, singing, screaming, etc., you'll find that you can actually do the butt trick. Squeeze your butt cheeks together and and stand up a little bit taller, and you'll feel like you have more air in your lungs. I don't know why that works. It just tends to. All right. So that's all I have for you today on the throat and breathing stuff. Next time, we're going to tackle one of the screaming styles. And I'll give you a hint which it is. See you next time.